In this lesson, we will be covering what an op mode is, as well as different types of op modes. You should have already seen our previous tutorial about setting up your phone with the control hub. If you have not seen it, the link to the video is in the description and in the upper right hand corner of this video right now. In this tutorial, we will cover the theory behind op modes, the different types, and then look at some sample op modes. It is also worth noting that since this is the first programming tutorial, that watching this video sets you on a path to completing the series using Block's code. This is good if you don't have a background in programming concepts or don't know Java. If you feel like you have a sufficient understanding of both basic programming and Java, refer to our on-bot Java videos instead. If all that sounds good to you, let's begin the tutorial. Op mode stands for operational mode. It is the code that runs when you start your program from your driver station phone. There are two distinct types of op modes. The two types of op modes are autonomous and teleop, sometimes called teleoperated. They mimic the two stages present in an FTC game. The autonomous period lasts for the first 30 seconds of the game. During this time, robots must maneuver without any driver assistance, based on pre-programmed instructions. The next 1 minute and 30 seconds are teleop. In this time, one or two drivers can use controllers to control the motion and behavior of their robot. Something to be noted is that you are allowed to have the robot perform some or even all functionality autonomously in this portion. However, it is rarely done due to the high chance of error with autonomous operations especially with opposing alliance robots in its area. So, essentially, autonomous op modes run without the use of a controller, and teleop op modes primarily use a controller. To understand how an op mode works, and how it flows, it's important to understand how computers read your code. This applies to both autonomous and teleop. A computer will read your code from left to right, top to bottom. This means that things that occur higher up in the code might affect the code that occurs later. It becomes slightly more complicated when you start bouncing to different parts of the code, or looping certain bits of code. There are three primary ways to control the flow of your program, or what part of your code the computer is executing. There are conditional statements, loops, and functions. We will learn about these a little bit later in the video. For now on, in the op mode, as soon as the user clicks initialize, the computer will start reading the code from the top of the run op mode function. From there, it will go down meeting roadblocks such as if statements and while loops that will hold it in certain places until the user performs certain actions. Let's see some actual code for these op modes. Start by heading to where we left off in the last tutorial. To do this, you'll need to power up your control hub and wait till the LED indicator turns green. This will take about 30 seconds. Once it's done, on your driver station phone, open the menu and click program and manage. Next, ensure that you're still connected to the hub's Wi-Fi network. Then from an external device such as a laptop, navigate to the local web address shown on your driver station phone. Then click Blocks. Next, click the Create New Op Mode button. From here, name the file anything you want. Leave Sample Op Mode blank and click OK. Once the file opens up, you'll see some pre-generated code. Direct your attention to the top of the screen. Here you're able to set whether the op mode is autonomous or teleop. You can also hide or reveal the op mode in the driver station app by toggling Enabled. Finally, if you click Save Op Mode, the most recent version of the code will be added to the control hub. If it is enabled, it can then be found on the driver station phone, under either Autonomous or Teleop, depending on which the op mode was selected as. If you would like, you can create a backup of any blocks program by clicking Download Op Mode. This will download a file that you can upload by clicking Upload Op Mode when in the main menu. This makes an effective way to share or safeguard your code. Another thing that can be done is downloading an offline version of the blocks editor. You can do this by clicking Download Offline Blocks Editor in the main menu, when you are connected to the robot. Here you can see me downloading the zip folder, extracting its contents, and then launching the index.html file. I create a new op mode in the offline editor. And to be clear, I could have done this disconnected from the robot or any Wi-Fi network. This lets you to develop code without your robot in the future. You won't be able to test it, however, until you have your robot again. When you're ready to test, simply download the op mode from the offline editor and upload it to your robot connected editor. You can also upload op modes to the offline editor in case you closed it between programming sessions. Make your way back to the file you created. Your goal by the end of this tutorial should be able to understand how the pre-generated code works. To do this, you'll need to print two different bits of text during two unique stages of the program. These two combos are when the program has been initialized but not started yet, print status colon initialized. The next one is after the user clicks play. At that point, click status colon running. To do this, you'll need to know some additional information. On screen right now is an index of what we will be covering. 
If you already know a topic, skip past that point at the timestamp shown on the screen. The first thing you might want to know is how you can print data in the first place. You can print information from your program to the driver session phone through the telemetry.addData command. The command can be found towards the bottom of the utilities dropdown. You'll need to provide the function a key and a value. The program will then display key colon value the next time telemetry.update is called. In our case, the key will always be status for both cases. The value will differ depending on where in the program it is placed, changing from initialized to running. Something important to note is that the telemetry will only show up on the phone after telemetry.update has been called. Another important thing to know in your effort to understand the pre-built code is what some built-in functions do. Dot wait for start halts the program execution until the start button has been pressed. Dot op mode is active does not do anything, but instead returns true or false depending on whether or not the play button has been pressed and the stop button has not been. We can see this be used by if statements and while loops to control the program flow. We previously discussed about program flow and the three ways to manipulate it. If you want to know where to place your telemetry commands for this current challenge, you will need to understand two of these concepts, those being if statements and loops. With conditional statements, we will be specifically looking at if statements. An if statement is a piece of code that will only run if the answer to a question, specified by the programmer, is yes. This type of question can only have two answers, yes meaning true, and no meaning false. This two answer format is called boolean. Programmers can use many tools to convert their complicated questions into simple true or false checks. Here is one example. We can convert the complicated question of how are you feeling today to a simple yes or no question by comparing it to how you were feeling yesterday. Are you feeling better than you were feeling yesterday? That can be answered with a yes or a no, despite it not being the best human answer. Techniques such as checking equality, greater than or less than, or inequality, are some ways to convert complicated questions to Boolean questions. If the answer is a yes, a specified bit of code will run. If no, it'll skip over that bit. An example of this in using an FTC robotics application would be if a button A is pressed on the controller, then move the arm up. There's also else if, and, or sometimes called elif, and else statements, but we do not need to get into that for now. The if statement can be found under the logic drop-down menu, although you will not need to e implement it for this challenge, only understand how it works. Moving on to loops. Loops are very similar to if statements. A loop will keep running the bit of code specified while the condition is true, whereas if you recall, an if statement will only run it once. It is then fitting that this type of loop is called a while loop. It uses the same boolean condition style that an if statement uses. There is also a type of loop that simply loops over a certain code for a specified number of times. We will not cover that now. An example of an FTC specific example would be to keep the program running while the user has not pressed the stop button. The while loop can be found under the logic drop down menu, although just like with the if statement you will not need to implement a new one, just understand how the current one works. With the knowledge of loops and if statements, you should now understand how the program works. And with your understanding of telemetry, you should know how to print the text to the driver station phone. Put these things together to place the telemetry commands in the correct places in the code. Remember that the telemetry commands will be changing the status from initialized to code running. If you have successfully placed the telemetry command blocks, then when you save the op mode and then click initialize on the driver station phone, it should say status colon initialized. Then do nothing until you click play. Once play is pressed, it should switch to say status running and continue to do so until stop is pressed. So go ahead, pause the video right now and give it a try.